Hello and welcome to the next YouTube video on my channel, Shah Khomad. If you want to learn how to play chess, then this video is just right for you. In this video I show and explain you the chess board, the chess pieces, and also the first rules of the game of chess. So let's start with the chess board. It consists of 64 squares, 8 rows by 8 columns, on which the 32 chess pieces are placed at the start of the game. This 16 chess pieces represent the white army and on the opposite side of the chessboard the other 16 chess pieces here represent the black army. In my case I have red pieces instead of black pieces just so you can see them better on the black squares here. The columns of a chessboard are known as files, the rows of a chessboard are known as ranks and the lines of adjoining same colored squares are known as diagonals. Every single square of the chessboard has its own name. They are named using algebraic notation. Using White's perspective, the files are labeled 1 through H from left to right, and the ranks are labeled 1 through 8 from bottom to top. Each square is identified by the file and the rank which it occupies. For example, if you search square B5, then you just look where's file B, that's here. Then you search rank 5, that's here, and you see where they occupy. So you go up from file B till you are on rank 5. So this square is called, right, B5. If you want to practice the names of the squares, you can just put your finger on a random square, for example here, and look how it is called. So we know this square here is on file F and also on rank 3. So this square here is called, right, F3. Now we come to the chess pieces. You can also imagine chess as a fight between two states. The both states here are you and your opponent. You have both an army of 16 chess pieces. Here's the white army and here's the black army. And every single chess piece has its own value to represent its strength in the game of chess. Let's start. You have both a king, here and here. He is the most important piece in the game. Then you have a queen here and here. She is the strongest piece with 9 points value. The bishops surround the queen and the king in the middle. They have 3 points value. Also 3 points value have the knights. Here, here and of course also here in the black army. And in the corners of the chessboard are the two rooks with 5 points value. Here, here and also here and here. In front of all these chess pieces are the eight pawns. They are the weakest chess piece with only one point value. If you are not sure on which side the queen and the king stands, you can remember the rule that the queen loves her color. So at the start of the game, the queen, the white queen, stands on the white square and the black queen, of course, stands on the black square. Every chess piece has its own rule in the game. Now I will explain you the rule of every single chess piece and how it goes. Let's start with the king. On the chessboard, the king is the most important figure in the game. But every move, he can only go one square far. Horizontal, vertical, and also diagonal. In this position here, altogether he controls 8 squares. Now we come to the queen. The queen is on the chessboard the strongest chess piece, and she also can move horizontal, vertical and diagonal like the king, but not only one square far, but rather over the whole chessboard. For example, like this, or like this, or also like this. If she's in the middle of the chessboard, so on square d4, d5, e4 or e5, 
She altogether controls 28 squares. The bishop. The bishop has three points value and he can, he can move as far as possible but only diagonal. So like this or like this. Altogether in the middle of the chessboard he controls 13 squares. The knight. The knight is in chess the most interesting chess piece. He can go two squares forward and then one square to the side. You can always decide if you go two squares forward and then to the right or two squares forward and then to the left. Also very interesting is that he can overjump other figures and when he stands on a black square like here, you can only move on a right square and if he stands on a white square, you can only move on a black square. Here he maximum can control eight squares. The Rook. The Rook is in chess the second strongest figure. He can only move horizontal and vertical, but as far as possible. So, horizontal, vertical. If he stands in the center of the chessboard, so on d4, d5, e4 or e5, he can maximum control 14 chess squares. Now we come to the last and also the weakest chess piece in the game, and that's the pawn. He can only move one square forward, and again, one square forward. But there's one exception. If the pawn haven't moved yet in the game, so imagine here are also the other figures of the white and the black army, he can skip the first square and move two squares forward. You don't have to do that, you can also move only one square, but often it is very practical to do this. Now we come to some rules of the game of chess. First, you and your opponent have to decide who plays the white army and who plays the black army. You can easily do this by putting one white pawn and one black pawn in both of your hands behind your back, for example like this, and then your opponent have to choose one hand, one fist. So if you choose this fist, here is the black pawn. So your enemy has to play the black army and you play the white army. For example, I start with moving my pawn on e4. So I use the exception of the pawn and skip the first square. Then it's black's turn and he plays a synchron move also with the pawn on e5. Now it's again my turn, then again his turn, then again mine, and so on. But there is an exception. You can't move on a square which is already occupied by another chess piece of your own army. So for example, if I move my knight here on c3, so I overjump my own figures and go two squares forward and one to the right. And here on b5 is already my pawn. I can't move with the knight on this square because it is already occupied by a figure of my own army. But if on b5 there wouldn't be my own pawn, but rather the pawn of the black army, my white knight could move on this square and take the black pawn out of the whole game. The only exception here in this rule is the pawn. I'll move now a bit of all the pawns and show you the three exceptions how the pawn can take out other figures. Let's start. I say again I play here on e5 and e4 and black answers synchron. Now the two pawns face each other in the center of the chessboard and can't go any further. Because with the pawns you move forward but can only take out other figures diagonal. So if black wouldn't go synchron with this move but rather with this move I could take the black pawn out with my own pawn. But let's say again, black plays synchron, and then I take out my second pawn. 
here on f4. And now, black's pawn can take out my own pawn with the diagonal outbeating. Then I take out my third pawn here on g4. And now we come to the second rule. Here, the pawn also can move diagonal on g3 and take out this pawn. That's called en passant beating. But let's get on playing again. White moves again one square forward with the pawn and the black pawn takes out the white pawn again diagonal. White moves one square forward with the pawn and now we come to the last and also the third rule of the pawn. The black pawn take out again diagonal the white knight and is now here on g1, so on the first rank. And also called, this rank is also called the baseline. And now this pawn here can transform himself into every finger he wants except the king and of course you also can transform from a pawn into a pawn. Often the, the pawn transforms himself into the strongest piece of the game, the queen. So he is a queen now. If you don't have a second queen like me, you can just take a random object, object and say now that's the queen. In this case it wouldn't be so practical to transform the, himself into a queen because the right rook could instantly take the queen out of the game. I have shown you how the game begins, how it runs, but of course there also have to be an end because you can't just move the figures infinitely long. A very important thing in chess is the check. That's when you attack the king and with the next move you can take him out. So for example if I move now with my own rook here on b8 and also in the rank of the black king, I attack him. So it's a check. And then he has three opportunities to do something against it. The first opportunity is of course that he just move away of the threat, for example here. The second opportunity is that he moves one of his chess pieces between his king and the threetner, so here it's the white rook. For example, you can do this if he moves here. And the third opportunity is that he just take that he just take out the figure that attacks. So he moves diagonal and takes out the white rook. But let's imagine there isn't this black bishop, and the white king is here. And now he does again a check and the black king can't do something against it. The game is over and white have won. That's also called checkmate. Here the black king can't place another figure between the white rook and the king because there aren't any figures left. And he also can't take the white rook out because there aren't any fingers left. So he has to move away with the king. But, of course, he can't stay on the rank of the white rook because he would still attack him. And also, he can't go on this, on this, and also not on this square. Because one very important rule in chess is that the bold kings can't stand together. That was it then already with the video, in which I have shown and explained you the chess board, the chess pieces, and the first rules of the game of chess. Thank you for watching. I hope now you are better in chess and can beat one of your family or one of, or one of your friends. Of course, that weren't all rules, so I'm going to make more and more parts of the first rules of chess, which will be uploaded in one week. Feel free to leave a like there if you liked the video and subscribe on my YouTube channel Shachomat. Until next time. Bye.